morning, everybody. Now we uh, start our explanation about the fifth cyclical crisis in China. Um, we need to have the basic acknowledge to notice that this time, the fifth economic crisis did have a very special uh, character, that is the hard landing. And when we give the brief of the other four times, at the other four crises, since 1949 to 1974, 75, I indicated these uh, four crises all have soft landing because that not only the governments to adopt the right policy, but also because of that time, the agricultural reform or the rural society play a very important role to be the base for the city industrial capital soft landing. When we talk about soft landing or hard landing, that is not for people. That is for state capital. To be an indigenous population country, you have a no chance to take the overseas resources and overseas properties and overseas surplus for your own industrial capital soft landing. So you only can make a kind of base for absorb the industrial capital cost when the industrial capital have the crisis in the urban area, in the city, because in average, most of this uh, industrial capital allocated in urban area, in the cities. So when they have the economic crisis, the big cost, if only absorbed or only taken by the city, that must be hard landing in the city. If they can transfer out the institutional cost to rural area, to the agriculture, means that the agriculture can be the base for city industrial capital cost half soft landing. So that is uh, not very easy to understand. But even that you cannot understand, I hope you make a record. You, you write down in your notebook, in the end, step by step, to understand your own situation, and then to compare with others. And then you may know that hard landing and soft landing is a big difference. If hard landing in the cities cannot transfer out the institutional cost to countryside, means that there must be a big change or institutional transition or whatever changed. So this time, when we talk about 1979, 1980, when China have a big crisis happening in cities, this time, no way to transfer out the institutional cost. And then, the 1979 to 1980s, this economic crisis did have to hard landing in city area, in urban. So that is a big difference. When we talk about the crisis, yes, I suppose that people understand there is a kind of psychological crisis as a kind of economic regulation. It's no doubt, people are easy to, 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 uh, to accept, <laughs> to understand. Any economic system, when they grow up, when they want to set up industrializations, there must be a kind of cyclical crisis happen. And then indicate this a cyclical crisis as a kind of economic regulation, not our theoretical creative. Because Marxism, even be before Marx, there are many scholars has described such kind of economic regulation. There must be a kind of cyclical crisis happened 
when you want to set up your industries. Because industries need to have a capital intensive investments. If you're short of the capital, you must have a debt. And debt turn to the cost. Cost means that you do have to pay. That is the reason of the economic crisis. But few people talk about the economic crisis, how to transfer out their institutional cost from the industrial allocated the city area to the rural area. So because China is a dual system, a typical urban and the rural uh, is uh, not the same institutions, not the same social culture, not the same society. So in China, before 1980s, most of these uh, crises can transfer out their institutional cost to China. The, 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 how to say that? It's a very uh, critical case. That is, uh, since the crisis happened in 1960, China transferred out the unemployment population, especially the young unemployment population, to countryside. And then, in 1968, when the second uh, industrial crisis happened, China also can transfer out the unemployment use from urban area to rural area. And then, in 1974 also, so these are three times are very typical, transfer out unemployment use, and then reduce the potential risk of the social chaos happening in cities. So you know that is a kind of regu regulation that every system, every political regime, if you have very big number of unemployment use, there must be a social conflict. There must be social chaos happened in the economic crisis area that is in city. Because of China can transfer out this unemployment use from the city to the countryside. So every time they can have a soft landing. No social chaos, no social conflicts happen in city. Means that you reduce the institutional cost in the cities. So the modernization, modern superstructure politically, mainly set up in the, in the cities. Almost all of these uh, political superstructure modernized must be pay high cost. So you need, you need to use uh, the, the police as a kind of very big force, and then you need big cost. And then you use them to surprise these, uh, these, uh, these uh, social uh, conflicts in the street. So you need to pay much high cost for the police system. So everything happened, I think it's very popular, most people under, can understand. But, but this time, from 1978 uh, to 1980s, when the, this time's crisis happened, why the Chinese governments cannot transfer out the institutional cost caused by the economic crisis to rural area? Why not? Or you know, they have a three times transfer out. Why not this time? So that is a, I should give the explanation. And then followed, if they cannot transfer out, if the crisis hard landing in the city area, and then what is followed? What happened? So that is a, that's the fifth cyclical crisis happened. It's with hard landing, and then to make, to make the so-called reform, that is an economic transition or institutional transition, whatever. When we talk blah, 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 blah about such kind of transition, we must know what is original. Where these transitions come from? It, should, it also means that you must know where you are and where you come from. And then you may know that further where you are going to. So let's come to the explanation. First, also the background. Look, the background need to 
do the analysis about international environment and the domestic uh, issues. So the international environment, we should know that since 1970s, when China regained the formal diplomat diplomatic relations with uh, UN and with uh, United States and so on and so, it means that China regained the formal diplomatic relations with uh, different kinds of the countries because UN has accepted uh, uh, his position, uh, the Chinese position. So that is, uh, uh, you can see that in UN, that is uh, from 1970, beginning of the 1970s, China regained the seats of the UN to, to take the position. And then in the 1974, the Chinese leaders, political politicians, also need to announce the third world theory created by Mao. That is Deng Xiaoping. Laterly, it changed. But in the 1970s, because of this uh, big uh, uh, change, especially Mao's the third world theory, still be very much impact, very much influential in the third world countries. So in 1970s, the whole of the political environment, geopolitical environment around China is more and more changed, more and more better. So we can see that and uh, the geopolitical conflicts mainly happened in South Asia, in Near East, and in Africa or Latin American countries, and far from China. And uh, the, the, the Northeast Asian countries and areas has been settled down. Japan re uh, come to China and then to have a kind of friendship that since 1970s, 1980s, East Asian area, these are two major enemy originally since 19th century. They fight many times, but the 1970s settled down. And Japan start to not pay back, but anyway, they have a kind of very low interest rates uh, loan from the government side. Every year is a large number. It's, it's a less than 50 billion every year to uh, give to China for the uh, industrial construction. These uh, loans uh, combining the machines and the facilities systematically means that China got a lot of facilities, especially the, uh, the petrochemical and, and, uh, and the machine, uh, machinery uh, industries, mainly come from Japan. So that is a Northeast Asian area settled down. It's a peaceful area. And then China did have a chance to develop the state industrialization. It still be I should emphasize, this should, should be state capitalist industry. Means that which one have the opportunity? State capitalist industry. State capitalist industry expand by the peaceful environment. So state take this opportunity to develop state capitalist industries. I just uh, gave you a second. Think about this argument. And uh, inside of China, there is also big change. 1976, Zhou Enlai, Zhu De, and Mao Zedong, these are three big men in China from the revolutionary area, from the revolutionary period. These uh, politicians became the extremely important Chinese leader. So one by another death. And then the new leadership. Mao appointed Hua Guofeng to be the new leader and concentrated all the power to him. But only three years replaced by a group politician leadership means that one people changed into group politicians. 
including of Chen Yun, Deng Xiaoping, Li Xiannian, Peng Zhen, and Deng Yingchao. We, at that time, from late 1970s, as a transition period, from 76 to early 1980s, until the 89, means that we have at least 12 years or 11 years. The political regime or political leadership changed from one extremely important man to a group important man to make decision. So that is a, it's a, this is an internal change. Few people understand what is that. That means that you have a leadership structure, not by one person. This is structural decision making means that they can represent different interest group in end to express what they, they want to uh, involve of the decision making. And then, but after they have the power, the late 1970s, 78, that is so-called the 11th Congress and the, the, the third, uh, what, what is uh, that? I cannot exactly translate. But anyway, it's a very important meeting in the party, in the party central committee, and then to make a decision want to change. A lot of people think that from this time, 1978, and that is uh, the, the start year, a start means, a start point of the Chinese economic reform, but it's not exactly right. Because this time, this meeting is uh, mainly gave the critique to Mao's cultural revolution. Because Mao's cultural revolution anti a lot of high leaders, the high position leaders. So they are now regain their position, and then they gave the uh, uh, feedback. They criticized Mao's policies and Mao's thoughts. And so that is an anti Mao's political meeting. And then that is a de Maoist uh, thought now became a kind of important uh, uh, instruction uh, ideology. But this uh, ideology can be satisfied that these are uh, high positions leaders, these are political leaders, but may not be satisfied the low class. So low class short of the mobilization. Originally in Mao's time, when Mao set up this uh, class struggle theory and the continual class struggle, whatever, you can think that it's, a, it's a workable, it's effective in mobilizing the low class to join the construction because at that time you have no capital. You only need to make the people as a power to invest into the construction. So at that time, Western media gave a lot of photos to show that China is a so-called people mountain, people sea. <laughs> Means uh, you, have a, you have a very foolish, and you only use the man, manpower, and you have a very backward. That is, a, yes, Western society, when they do have a lot of colonized area, they can take the surplus from other people see. <laughs> so they don't need to use themselves to invest their labor. So they are ver stand very high position and then look down at you, they said, okay, you are foolish. You only can use your own people. It's uh, not human rights, whatever. They can give many critics. But it's uh, very workable if you have a zero capital. It means that you have, the, even that when you, you need to pay back the debts, means that your capital is minus. So by that, by originally Mao's thought, by Mao's thinkings, means that you can use the class struggle as a kind of theory, as a kind of ideology to mobilize the low class to volunteer, pay little, even no pay. You just give them food. And then they can organize themselves as a sub-military organization and then go into the reservoir construction, irrigation construction, even the third front construction. 
That is for the state capitalist industry, not for people's life. Not for the infrastructure in the countryside for, for, for high yield. It's for state capital. But they volunteer to contribute. That's because they think that they are now drawing the, the, the worldwide class struggle to help the poor countries, to help these colonized countries to anti-colonization, to anti-imperialism. So many things that to make them to believe that whatever they do is right. But one later 1970s, in 1978, at that time the, the economic crisis didn't happen, haven't, hasn't happened. But when they changed the political, re not, not regime, they changed the political leadership and then fo followed, changed the ideology. <laughs> Gave many critical comments to the 1960s to and 1970s also. But they are not aware, they are lost the hands to mobilize the low class. So that is a potential risk. Will be happened for hard landing of the economic crisis. So that is a very important. And also, when China in 1978 started to have a recorrect these, uh, these uh, uh, intellectuals and uh, these uh, uh, cadres and uh, these uh, kind of uh, political movements to release their burden, their political burden, and then to make them to take back their positions. That is uh, from 1978. At that time, I was a member uh, in the team to recheck their personnel documents, and then to take all of these uh, bad documents to show that this guy have a, what kind of political matters, what kind of bad things. We take all these documents out, and then clean up, and then to make this guy to be a man with uh, everything right. So at that time, I'm a team member to do such kind of Document, doc, documentary recleaning work. And then so millions intellectuals from 1950s, you know, started from 1957. 1957, that's anti-rightist movements. And then the rightist at that time is a million. And not all the rightist, but somehow it's a mistake, it's a semi-rightist. But they got some penalty, got some treatment. So uh, the total number at that time, we have a half million rightist. Another half million is uh, mistakes in worth of the rightist movement, rightist uh, uh, affairs, or rightist uh, something. And anyway, million. And then this million all clean up means that they have a nothing right, nothing wrong from 1950s. But if you make them to have the mistake in 1957, from that time until 1978, 20 years, they have a very heavy political burden on the shoulder. They cannot, very, as a regular people, to do whatever. And then even their, their children. So it's a big political movement in 1978. But if you, you take these, make these people to take their positions, and originally their children, you know, when we have a so-called going mountain, going uh, countryside, that's a movement. The first uh, uh, part of the young people going to the countryside is this, uh, you know, mistake, uh, the, the, the political burden uh, uh, people, their young generation must be the first sent to the countryside. And if you, if there is some some opportunity to to have the uh, uh, em, em, employee uh, to have the the, the 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 chance to to be a worker in county or in some mine or in some factory, certainly these uh, 
a, a bad family background, young generation cannot have. So many things. So at this time, when you give the uh, 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 chance for these remaining old generation, so some remaining of their generation need to re-clean up again. So that is uh, related with the, the, the educated youth movement. And so that these people in 79 educated youth come back to cities. That is also the big movement because there is uh, more than 10 million educated youth need to come back to their city family. Maybe, maybe it's uh, 20 million. I cannot remember very, very clear how many is the number, but it's a big number. And remember, this, I just mentioned, from 1979, the economic crisis became obviously, it's, it's happened in 1979. And then this time, you have no ability to send this unemployed youth from city to the countryside. Also, you need to absorb these uh, 20 million, at least more than 10 million educated youth from countryside back to the cities. So that is uh, why I said there's a hard landing, because that unemployment became m more severe than any time in the past. So in this time, they need to have a lot of measures to deal with this time hard landing crisis. And then all of these measures renamed as economic reform. So the reform started from late 1970, exactly from 1979. Not from 78. 78 is a political re uh, recracked. And from 79, that is the economic crisis happened. And then they started to deal with the economic crisis. And then in name of economic reform. So that is a Chinese story. I just uh, gave you one second. Put this uh, explanation into your brain. And then start from this uh, point. You can have a lot of explanation about modern China since 1980s. That's why I have came. Now, another thing is also very important. That's the border war between China and Vietnam. And Vietnam want to, you know, the one Vietnam win the Vietnam War. Vietnam want to reorganize the, the Southeast uh, Peninsula. And there is a three countries, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. When French colonized this area, French want to set up the, the Union, that is a Southeast Asian Union, in this peninsula. So that is a, when Vietnamese political uh, re regime taken from French colonial system, they are trying to take the historical heritage, reset up this union. So when Vietnam been unified the Vietnamese uh, terror, furthermore, they are going to take others. So why there's a border war? Few people understand when China sent a lot of troops to attack the North Vietnam terror and then retreat back. It's uh, why China should do that and also keep the highway pressure at the border. And then that means another, another, uh, another meaning is that to make Vietnamese withdraw from, from Laos and from Cambodia because there's a very high, very tension relation at the north of Vietnam terror. So they need to take the troops to the north, try to protect their border. So the north border is somehow is a two provinces in China. 
So China organized the, the, the troops at the, at the border. And then to have a tension relation with Vietnamese means that Vietnamese got to release the military assault in, in military attack in Cambodia and the law. So that is a, to make this weaken the weaken. And then this area still be three countries maintain their sovereignty. And up to now, nowadays, you can see it's important. When ASEAN plus one, you can see that when some ASEAN countries close to China, Cambodia is one, Laos is another. So when these countries play a role in ASEAN, at least they have a country vote geopolitically to close to China. That is uh, from 79. But this time, because of the Korean War, there is a, a big cost. You need to pay the whole of expense. That is, a less, this is almost half million. Not calculated into the, uh, the budget plan. But it happened. And then turned to the budget deficit. Means that one third of the annual budget deficit come from the Vietnam War, the China border with Vietnam. So that is 1979. Why this uh, budget deficit crisis happened? It's not only caused by the foreign debt, but also caused by the budget deficit. So the title of this lecture, I said, that is a uh, caused by the foreign debt and the budget deficit. Budget deficit partially from the war happened in china Vietnam border. So that is why I take some pictures here to make people understand. And by many, the reason is that of this, this crisis, reason is that so-called um, Yang Yao Jin means that the great leap of foreign capital investment or the foreign or the foreign investments or something means that because of the new leaders when Hua Gofeng took power in 1976 he also need to show that his performance is much better so he make a decision not only himself his staff including of Chen Yun Li Xianian and this uh, this uh, senior person in old time. So they make decision want to have a eight year long project to absorb $8.2 foreign facilities and machines systematically keep changing the structure of the industry come from Russian side. Russian styles is a heavy industry, military industry, occupied 70% of the total industries. And Mao changed a part. Now Hua Gofeng want to keep going to change the structure of this heavy industry, military industry, industries mainly changed to uh, uh, local needs. I mean domestic demand. That is a uh, livelihoods. So they also want to have a chemical and uh, uh, f fertilizer and uh, have uh, textiles and f whatever. And also the automobile and the cars. And nowadays these uh, cutters, they take their positions. Millions, they want to have a, they want to enjoy the cars. And now they only can import from Japan, from Korea, and also from Europe. And from the late 1970s, they started to take the whole of the, the, the car mobile, mobile uh, plant from Brazil. And Brazil take from the German. So it means that it's a second hand. But it's a somehow not very cheap because you don't have. So Santana at that time is a transfer from, originally it's a German brand. And then German gave this a, it's a as a second hand to Brazil. Brazil gave China as a third hand. And so that is a, you, you set up this one in Shanghai, but it's a high cost. 
and because it's uh, passing by the Latin American countries. But it's also very advanced in China because you, ha you don't have, originally you only have a Warsaw, you have a Jim, uh, uh, Jim, that is from Russia. And uh, Russian styles automobile is uh, cars. But now you, you have a, a Western European styles. And uh, that is started from late 1970s. But all need to pay back with the foreign reserve. But at that time, the same as 1960s, 1970s. You only can sell your agricultural products and the textile products and the clothes and the shoes. These are very low returns products. And then you can have a foreign hard currency and then pay to these uh, high price machines and, uh, and, 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 and facilities. And also high price of these uh, techniques. So that is uh, originally an unfair trade. Low price agricultural products. But you only have that. And others, like even Brazil, they don't need you send you sell back the, the Santana car to Brazil. Certainly you cannot sell to Europe because it's very old brand. They have a uh, give up. So if you did want to, if you do want to sell these cars, you need to give very low price as a second hand. So it means that you cannot sell high price industrial products to others. It's similar as 1950s with Russia. You only can give them the mine products and agricultural products. Similar means that China at that time still be a developing country. With very low position. So that is uh, why we have a, when you do want to have a, a foreign invest, do you want to, when you, ha when you want to have these uh, foreign machines, means that you need to pay back with very high cost. So that is a so-called the great leap with a foreign capital. Oh, that is a foreignized great leap. But that is a plan. They want to set up an eight-year plan to absorb these foreign investments. But when the first year in 1977 and second year in 1978, they made much, much bigger foreign machines, much bigger than the total amount of the eight year. The first year is uh, $4 billion. It's almost half. And then they have, they have no such kind of foreign hard currency, so they need to have a long-term payment, means that it's debts. 40%. So 6% they paid in hard currency. That is uh, almost 80% of the total foreign reserve has been sent out. And then another 40% must pay back later. But later you don't have enough ability to take your foreign reserve increment. So that's uh, just two years, 77, 78. They have, a, they have a bought more than $10 billion foreign machines and foreign facilities from Western countries. That immediately turned to the foreign debts. These foreign debts need to pay back by your central budget and then turn to the budget deficit. So from 79, the budget deficit became less than 30 billion Chinese yuan. But in 1970s, 1978, the total amount of the budget income, just a hundred billion, means that 30% turn to the deficit. It's a terrible situation, because 30% means what? Our only central budget, one third, for maintain the management. You need to pay to the 
uh, to the uh, defense. You need to pay to the government's departments. You need to pay the daily expense. That is a one third. Another one third is for social umbrella. You have a aging people. You have a medical service. You need to pay to young children in the kindergarten. You need to pay the education. You need to pay everything is public needs. So the public needs, the social service also need one third. So the management one third, social needs one third. Another one third is what? It's for infrastructure construction. It's for factory construction. That is for, that is for the construction. Before 1980s, every penny paid in China is for the budget. That is from the budget. So if one third of the budget system is deficit, means that you need first to cut off the construction expense. If there is no construction expense, means that no room for employment. That is the crisis. This crisis happened in 19, late 1979 and early 1980. So that is a caused by the huge deficit. And then the deficit above 30 billion means that one third, more than one fourth, almost one third became the deficit. And then you have no ability to invest into the construction and then no room for new employment. And also because of that time, nobody, no politician can like Mao, can be Mao's power to mobilize the young people unemployment. Young unemployment going to countryside. And also at that time, you can compare with, with the Premier Zhu Rongji, he can enforce more than 40 million SOE workers, state-owned enterprises workers, lost a job. That is late 1990s. But in the, in the late 1970s, nobody can do that. Because at that time, the working class is a proletarian. They occupied nominally the whole of the political superstructure. It means that time, late 1970s, the China, the system change hasn't uh, totally changed to the political superstructure. So at that time, it's illegal. So if you make the, the workers from SOE, from state-owned enterprises, from, from these enterprises, let them lay off. That is a no, no good in political uh, correct. So it's political incorrect. So late 1990s, it's a political correct. But in late 1970s, no, political incorrect. So that is difference. Let's see the, the, the crisis here. This is a budget, budget uh, income. The budget income down to more than, the, down to the 20 percent. And the budget uh, 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 expense up to 40 percent. This gap, <laughs> this gap is a big and all turn to the budget deficit. <laughs> Means that you have no ability to have income, but you, you, you did invest too much. And then this one, this gap, turned to the budget deficit. And then also turned to the foreign debts. So that is the, 1970s, the late 1970s. And then the foreign, the foreign investment and turned to the crisis. And hard lending turned to the economic reform. And we also need to say that at that time, the social chaos, the social contradictions potentially increased. And uh, caused by 70, 1976, Mao death and Zhou death. And uh, the low class and the middle class also think that these are, the, the, these are people death to make a, a kind of chance 
for them to show that they're dissatisfied. And uh, that is 79. When you have the critis critics to Mao's thought, means that they, when these uh, educated youth going down to the countryside, it's in politically incorrect. So they want to come back. And then that is their campaign. So they sit on knees to show that if you don't give us the right, come back to our ordinary cities. We will sit on knee forever. And then stop uh, uh, eating. So and uh, the, 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 the central need to send the high position cadre come down to, the, to Yunnan, to this farm, and to try to uh, solve the problems, and finally allow them to go back. So that is uh, uh, millions of uh, educated youth come back to the city from the countryside in 1979. And then to make the situation more severe, because of city now that time has had the economic crisis, has to reduce the investments in the construction. No room for these people come back. So they became jobless, homeless, not roomless at least. They have home, but home have uh, no room for them. Um, I remember in 1978, and uh, all of my family members, the late 1970s, one by another, come back to, the, to Beijing. Originally, we have a three-bedroom apartment before we sent to the countryside. So my parents, my sisters, and our, I and my younger brothers, so we have a three-bedroom, just uh, enough for our six people's family six members family. But when we come back, we have a two bedroom uh, because many people come back. So we only have a two bedroom uh, apartment. So what we owe uh, at that time is, uh, you know, uh, more than 80 years old. So we cannot just uh, hustle in two bedroom. And also that my, uh, my mother's father and uh, live with uh, our family. So we have a three generation, two bedroom. And that is very difficult. And uh, so in university, they separate the classroom with many families. So they only have a curve to block these uh, different families. So it's, that time is uh, exactly very difficult. And so you have a no room, means that you can have no wife. All ha they all, uh, at that time, they all were, you know, more than 20 years. So not only the surplus labor force, but also surplus of the energies. These young people have a big energy, nowhere to go. So they fight in the street and fight for a young girl, maybe, maybe for whatever, for a, a hat, a, a cap. At that time, they all like to, to have a, a, a military a hat, a cap, or the dress, or even a, a yaw dai, how to say that? It's a huh? belt, yeah, uh, even a belt, or a, a bicycle, whatever. If they like, they want to take, and then they fight. So at that time, the, the street violence, street fighting everywhere, and then, so when they, when they, these a million people come back to the cities, there's no room for their life. <laughs> and then economic crisis happened to make them in jail. <laughs> Look at these, uh, these uh, young people in jails. Yes, they have to learn something. And uh, these are young people captured by the policemen. So that is a so-called too hard surprise. These uh, 
criminals. One criminal is economic criminals. Another criminal is a is a 刑事犯罪 It's a what is that? It's a violence criminals. Huh? Means uh, anyway, it's a criminals is everywhere. That it's a criminals. If you fight, that's a criminals. And then if you have a long distance, uh, you became a dealer individually, and then you you buy something, sell something that is a uh, criminals. At that time, no market. So it's very easy to make these young people have no job, and then they fight in the street, and then they put in jail. So many. That is a. When the crisis happened, half hard landing in the cities, that we turn to the social chaos. So you got to use the policeman, you got to use the police system to price to, to surprise this uh, street violence. So that is a uh, many things happen. So and then governments take the measures. One is that the surprise. Another is that to open the markets. To allow individual to do their to the private business, so the these uh, young young people have no job, and then also very important that is a uh, government gave order, almost all the university, all the government departments, all the state-owned enterprises need to open door. Means that at that time the polit politician side, three people's food, you need to share with five. And then going further, they said five people's food, you need to share with ten. It means that state-owned enterprises need to absorb this uh, unemployment use in the factory, even they have no job, but you need to give them salary. But one thing is important. You have no efficiency. Ten people have five people's work. Even you can feed them with very low salary. They are poor, but means that if you calculate into per capita, the productivity in per capita, okay, lower. But that is also the reason to reform this uh, factory. You have no efficiency, so we need to reform you to make you to be the private. I stop for a second, give you room, and then you can think about that. What is a further more reform? I mean, order you to open door, to absorb this unemployment use, and then finally you said you have no efficiency. Who made you non-efficiency? Crisis. And then you help the government to solve the problem of unemployment, and then you became no efficiency, and then you need going for, forward to reform yourself. Is it logical or not? Nobody is so foolish. So you can think that what is a furthermore reform, okay? So that is a very important. But when we talk about China reform, we said it started from rural society. Why? Because here, they put into the museum. That is a kind of, you know, handwritings uh, 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 documents. <laughs> Means that there are 18 households want to read uh, separate, re, uh, they, yeah, redistribute. They are redistribute the arable land to every household in name of Da Bao Gan. Bao means a contract, but indeed it's not exact contract. It's a redistribute the land equally to every household. So that is a so-called start reform from the countryside. And then these pictures shows that when Chinese governments gave the rights to all the rural people that you can take part of land from the collective system, and then people have the very active to join these movements, to separate the land from the collectives, especially the poor area. Here is that when you have the land, you need to sign the contract. 
So contract is documents at that time. So, and that mean also means that China from the 1970s, uh, from 1950, you have the first time land reform. From 1980, you have a second time land reform. The land reform is the same, to read this few land to every household. In 1950, in name of land revolution, means take land as a property rights from the landlord and the kulak. But this time, it's take land from the collective. But the measures are the same. Equal distribution to every household depends on how much family member you have. So when they have that, what is the reason? It's because of the late 1979, the politicians in the central think about we do have we have no budget ability to invest into the countryside. Originally, the highest position of the budget to invest into the countryside is 70 uh, percent. Means that 70 percent of the budget investments going down to the countryside, even if it's small, but still be there. But when they have the budget crisis, they said reduce. When they reduce, they said, OK, give land to these uh, peasants, these households. They can contract their own stomach. stomach. So Baudu's means that peasants self-reliance to contract their own stomach by contract the land. Interesting? <laughs> but it's crisis. It's that the measures to deal with the budget crisis. You deal with budget crisis, they need to give up the budget covered economic field. The first is rural, is agriculture. They're trying to protect the city industries because city industries is state capitalism. Rural area, you contribute to your surplus. But nowadays, more than 85 of the budget income come from city industries. Rural only can contribute less than 15% from agriculture. But agriculture still need more than 15% budget to invest. So this time, they're trying to give up, to reduce. So after this contract system, means that peasants contract their stomach. Budget only pay less than 3% to the whole of the countryside construction means even the local cadre's salary come from the land, from agriculture, that time. Another internal reason of the rural reform is that long-termly, in the production team, means in natural village, we have a long-term contract, contract system. And if the team leader come to one arable land, they said, OK, you too, you contract this land. Three days, you finish your work. And then I give you how many credit, the labor credit. Originally, we have a 10 credit per day. But the, the team leader said, OK, give you 12. And the, our two close friends, we said, oh, no, we need 15. And then team leader said, OK, give you 13. And then we have 13.5. OK, so that is negotiate with the, 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 the collective system. And then we have a contract, a, a, a part of land. And then our close friends, we work together. And then we finish this work. And then we have a credit. And then means that you have more credit. You can have a more uh, income. So many things happen in, in, in countryside. So we have, a, if you said it's a contract system, everybody knows that. But if you said da bogar, means that the to, you, you contract all of your stomach by how much land you have. Means that government stop give you subsidies. Government stop to invest. You take everything for yourself, including of township and village expense. So that is a. Uh, 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 the contract system 
happening in China to be enamed, to be renamed as the rural reform. But the, anything need to pay the institutional cost. So here, the rural reform also make a very big cost. And because of the, 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 the collective system disbanded, uh, dismissed, abandoned. And then one fourth of the properties lost. And the, the hillside uh, uh, forestry belonged to the collective system, also contracted to the households. And all these households want to take them as a cash to buy the consumption uh, uh, products. So they cut down a lot of trees. And then the hillside land ruined out. And also the county levels and the township levels, they have set up a lot of factory to produce agricultural machine, even little tractors. And more than 2,000 of these county factories for small uh, tractors bankrupted. And a large number of the industrial properties in the county levels lost or privatized. So this is a big loss in the agriculture until late 1990s when governments do have some subsidies to subsidize the agricultural machine. So regenerate the agricultural machinery factories in county level or city level. But now never down to the township level. But originally in people's commune, township level have uh, five small factories. Almost every people's commune they have. But at that time, when you set up 90,000 township to replace people's commune, almost all of these uh, people's communes factories closed down. <laughs> Means that more than 90,000 small factories. Uh, yeah, some part of the coastal area like Jiangsu or Zhejiang or Shandong, Liaoning or Guangdong, uh, Zhe, the, these, uh, these uh, provinces, it's a coastal area nearby the cities, the, the people's commune still can maintain their factories. So the total number is uh, 25,000 people's commune still have their original system because of they have a somehow the industrials can contribute a lot to people's commune, so they can maintain. But most of the uh, people's commune dis dismissed. And but the very big return of the rural reform, besides its institutional return, is a rural industrialization. Because of the, you, you, you redistribute land to every household means that the surplus labor can be liberalized. You don't need so many laborers working in very limited land resources. So a lot of young laborers re liberated, joined the, the, the village uh, uh, factories. So these are very simple facilities. They just use uh, family facilities, but just uh, put together as a kind of workshop. That is a rural industry. Means that labor intensive. And also, the, they, 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 the rural industry have no technicians, no engineers, but they have a weekend, means Sunday engineer from cities, means that they pay your double price. You, you, you are an engineer. But Sunday is your free time. You can come down to the village to help us to solve the problem. So this guy is a Sunday engineer come from the city to the countryside to facilitate the technical issues in township and village enterprises. And the total amount of labor, almost 100 million, 100 million laborers, especially young laborers, liberalized from agriculture, drawing the rural industrializations, and then to make the rural income goes very fast, go up very fast. More faster than the urban income grows. So when the rural people have the income, rural people's uh, uh, consumption uh, 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 is indicator? Index. index 
consumption index, more than 70%. Urban people, less than 50%. Means that urban people have a one uh, yuan as income, only use half to, to their family consumption. But rural people need to use 70% in the consumption. So means that enlarge the local demands, domestic demands, and then help to solve the economic crisis. And also, I will talk about the, the macro measures governments adopt. Governments issued 40 billion bills. That is a high inflation. But why there is a no high inflation? Because of rural people income goes up. And then they absorb this uh, new added cash. So at that time, not very serious inflation. It's similar as 1950. When Chinese government's new authority issued a lot of paper currency, try to uh, solve the problem of the budget deficit. How much deficit? They print how much cash, absorbed also by rural people. Because in 1950, they started to redistribute land, to distribute land to the every households in countryside. And then these people, they, they want to sell their products, and then to take cash back to buy land, or to buy the, the, the other facilities for their rural production in increase. So they have all active to take the cash. So that's the same situation in 1980s, when Chinese central governments issue many paper money, 14 billion, to solve the problem of budget deficit. They win. They succeeded. By what? Not by the politician, by rural people. So it's very interesting phenomena happened in 1980s. So why I said that the, the real reform happened in the countryside, because they did the same as 1950 at the most time, not like the city uh, reform measures. In, urban, in rural area, it's the second land re reform, the second land redistrib redistribution. And then happened to turn to Lisa this uh, young labor into the rural industrialization and also rural townization. Many, many rural towns grew up. And then to make these, uh, these uh, uh, factories, to allocate it in towns. So there is this uh, a kind of naturally localization, townization, local industrialization, all turn to the localization. So the localization is alternative. It's not mainstream. Think about this uh, rural industrialization and rural townization. Is any relation with the state capitalism? No. It's peoples. It's locals. It's peasants. They belong to local people. So their returns also belong to the local people. That is why the rural income, the peasant income, increased much faster in the 1980s, faster than the urban people. So the rural urban gap decreased down to two, uh, uh, you know, that is a Gini efficiency, a Gini index. The Gini index from the three down to the two, on 2.3 or 2.4. Anyway, it's decreased. So that is a, a institutional return in the rural reform. So we need to know that the rural reform contributes a lot for the hard landing crisis in cities. Here, because of the people's commune dismissed, and then they got to change the rural governance system. Rural governance system have a more and a more big expense, and then need to taken by the rural people. So and then the farmer's burden, since they changed the system, the governance system, so the peasant's burden started, started, but more heavy in 1990s. But in 1980s, it just started. So let's talk about the, the, the part four, 
talk about the, the crisis in urban. This already happened in urban, hard landing urban. And then what is the measures government adopt to deal with the hard landing crisis? From 79 to, to 78, uh, to 79 to 98, there's a big uh, uh, deficit, almost 30 billion. 30 billion? Yes. And then it's much bigger than 1960. When we talk about the second crisis happening in China, that's 1960. And also ha very big than 1974. Because 1974, the deficit is uh, 10 billion. In late 1970, just five years later, it's uh, 30 billion. Three times. Then Mao's time. Okay? So the government started to issue the, the, uh, uh, the, the government bonds. But it's not exactly the, the treasury bonds. The Guo Ku Juan, and it's, uh, this Chinese name, means that the bill of the budget reserve, word to word translate. But it's, it indeed is a treasury bonds. So the, the issued treasury bonds started from 1980s and also issued the paper currency. That is a 40 billion. So they want to issue 4 billion treasury bonds and combining 40 billion added currency, paper currency, to solve the budget crisis means that more than 50 percent than the budget deficit. Because they need to keep going, invest for state capital industries. So it means that they do the measures as going long, not going short. Okay? And the cost by the agricultural growth, cost by the rural people income growth, that's measures, not so bad. Because there is no inflation. And then they are trying to do more open. So the openness policy also started from 1979. Originally, by Mao's time, they only can use their hard currency in China to buy the foreign facilities and the machines, not allow foreign capital investments to set up any factory, any firm in China. Also not joint ventured. Means that transnational company have no room in China. But from 79 opened, they said everything in the international society can do, we must do. That is from 79 they started. This is uh, the first uh, joint ventured, I mean, with a foreign capital, joint ventured uh, company they set up. And that is uh, 1981, they set up the special zone for openness, for foreign capital allocated. So this one, it means uh, uh, step by step. The late 1970s, the early 1980s, they allow transnational company allocated in special zone, a you know, special economic zone, not allowed to inland China. That is the beginning. And finally, allow them to go to everywhere. Okay. So that is uh, openness. And this one is that the state-owned enterprises reform. Uh, that's, that's one. They are trying to learn some, some so-called experience from rural China. They said allow the enterprises to expand their self-controlling rights, self-management rights. Uh -huh. And then going further to allow the manager the CEO to contract the whole factory and then to manage and then to run. Contract means that you contract and then you contribute the profit to the government department and then you manage this 
factory by yourself or by your staff. So the contract system, they said, is uh, workable in rural area. But indeed, rural areas redistribute land to the households. It's not exact contract. But nominally in contract system, so the urban reform, they duplicate the nominal reform from the countryside. But they don't redistribute the state properties to the workers. That is so-called privatization. So they give the contract to the factory leader, means the official, the manager, especially the CEO. So that means they have done something semi-privatization. And then after that, when the, 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 the manager take the power, take the management of the factory, they need to change the internal mechanism. That means that you need to give the rights to have the, 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 the salary difference and to have income difference. So that is a f step by step. They change the management system of the state-owned enterprises. And then going further more, allow, the governments allow the private sector. Also started from the beginning of 1980. So that is uh, 1981, and uh, the, the, they, 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 they allow the manager contract the, the big factory. And then 1983, allow the private sector to run the business, run the, the, the industry and, and, and the business. And uh, the One, can, one person can contract the whole uh, uh, factory. And uh, so these are the enterprises contracted by individuals. And then combining such kind of policy, they have a new policy to allow private uh, 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 business. Originally, not uh, allow them to have employee. You can be individually to run your business. That is the late 1979. But f just uh, several years, maybe two years or three years later, and it's very popular. These uh, businessmen hire the employees, the laborers, and then the 1984, I remember, there is a serious discussion. It's capitalism. State capital controlled factory is okay because it's state capitalism. Still belong to the whole people ownership. It's a political correct. But if you allow private manager, private businessman, have the labor working for him, means that the private take the surplus from the workers. That is uh, not socialism. It's capitalism. Means that you re reset up the capitalism. That's a serious discussion. Finally, they find some, some, some words from Marxism. And uh, less than eight. If just a, a less than eight, that means that this is a small workshop. Small workshop, not uh, capitalism. It's a uh, pre-capitalism. <laughs> so they got the evidence to show that, okay, the governments allow you hire less than eight workers working for the private business. But nobody can block them. So the private grow up and up and up, very faster and faster. So since the 1980s, the beginning, and the, yeah, the 79, they allow individual business, only by individual, by one person. But very soon, they found that all the family and the family relatives, if it says, this is my, my uh, nephew, they have many nephews. <laughs> you cannot stop them. So it is a, maybe it's, a, it's a far from his village. But you also can see that it's a nephew. So that you cannot just, uh, just block them. 
And then, so give them the room, and then private sector grow up faster and faster. So that is a big change. And mainly, this is originally from Wenzhou. It's a southern Zhejiang, this area is because of, the, they have no land. In per capita, the arable land per capita in Wenzhou, just a 0 0.4 mu. That's a 0 0.0. 0 0.0 two hectare per capita means that it cannot make you have a, the basic food means that it's hunger so UN gave the standardized that means uh, if less than 0 0.8 means that you are in hunger so in Wenzhou in southern Zhejiang it's a half of the UN standard means that they cannot use the land to make their, 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 their people to have a basic food. Half less than the international standard. So then most of these are people going to the private. They do a lot of business. Some business are very bad. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the people need to have their income. So you cannot, any leader in Wenzhou cannot stop that. So we have a do the, the interview to a lot of uh, party leader uh, in Wenzhou. Ask them that how that you can allow these uh, bad things happen. He said, okay, there's a uh, people, we, we cannot feed them. We don't have the state-owned enterprises, no factories, because Wenzhou is uh, at that time is a frontier facing the Taiwan. It's, uh, and then they, every day they need to do the preparation for fighting. So the, the government's not invest in Wenzhou to set up any state-owned enterprises. So they don't have factories. They only have agriculture. And then when you contract the land to every household, they have a large number of the surplus labor. Where are they gone? They got, got to go to the private business. So that is a basic situation in different areas. So you need to allow local people have a have their self-reliance uh, uh, by their resources, that's labor. So this labor need to have a job, even you give them low salary, but they got to have a job, to have the income, and then to feed themselves. So that is the situation. So when the governments have a very big uh, crisis, hard landing in cities, they cannot care about everything. So release control, and then you develop yourself. So they have a different model in different area. So that is the truth. So when we finish, they are going to finish this uh, lectures. We need to finally to summarize what we talked about this uh, late 1970s and early 1980s uh, economic crisis. You can see that when we do the crisis analysis, we first need to know the basic environment that it's politically and economically. Political environment that is uh, because it's a uh, late 1970s is the start of the political transition. From Mao's time, transit to post-Mao time. It's not exactly Deng's time. Deng's time from the beginning of 1980s. So there's a, there's a 76 Mao dies, and the Hua Guofeng took power. But it's not Hua Guofeng time, it's post-Mao time almost five years, until early 1980s, when Deng took the power, but at that time also not exactly Deng time because it's a group leader, until 89. The political accident happened in Beijing in Tiananmen Square. And then in the early 1990, in the summer of 1990, Deng side I'm the second leadership call. That is the, exactly the point of the Deng time started. Before that, no, you need to concern Chen, Li, and the other senior politicians' ideas and their suggestions and their concerns, whatever. So not one people can make decision. And when Deng said it's his uh, 
He is the core of the second leadership. It's started by Jiang, because at that time Jiang is the, from 89, Jiang is the general secretary of the party committee. So it's a, you cannot see that exactly Deng's time. And Jiang also played an important role. So this is uh, very complicated. But you can in name from 76 to 81. These are five years. It's, a, it's just tra transforming, transforming uh, 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 time or transforming years. You can in name that one is supposed to Mao. Because Mao dies. No, uh, nobody can say that he is the key person of the political leader. And uh, caused by the mainstream regain the power, they need to set up the political in uh, correct. So they criticize the Mao's time. Entitled Mao's time is extremely left wing. Over left, or whatever, Jizuo, but it's extremely left. Extremely. extremely left. So it means that when they set up a kind of political incorrect, means Mao's time, a lot of very effective experiences, institutions, and measures, and policies, all put into the extremely left with a political incorrect. Just now I gave the case about 79 educated youth, compact cities, large number, millions. It's because of educated youth going to countryside is politically incorrect. It's somehow like a kind of bad treatment. Originally it's because they believe that we are drawing to the world revolution. So they have such kind of passion going to countryside. And the worst family background, the active, they go into countryside. I'm one of the case. At that time, I do want to have a self criticize. I do want to have a self re re reform. We want, I said, I need to go into countryside to live with peasants and then to change myself. I have such kind of passion because I think that my family background is bad. My grandparents is uh, from, from bad family. Even my parents joined the revolution. But I cannot for, 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 forgive this uh, bad family background, old generation. So I need to do the self criticize I need to change myself, I need to waste hard work. That is uh, automatically, naturally, I want to do it. But when you changed the political correct system, you changed the ideological system, even that we think that, OK, you release, you make me throw out my burden politically. I can be a nominally as others. It means that you liberalize uh, my brain, my mind, and whatever, so I can do whatever just uh, by my effort. I can join the competition. Uh -huh. Maybe originally I did have some, some motion or some feelings, seeing that it's unfair. I do a lot of hard work, but I have no same e treatment. I think it's unfair, but it's underground. It's uh, potentially, not obviously. But when you change this ideology, I think that I need to have a, the same position to join the competition with others. Certainly, you have different ability. And then you cannot have the exactly fairness. Finally, I understand. But when the late 1970s, for us, I think it's a big opportunity. Especially when you open the universities, not they not depends on what kind of class. Originally, that the pe young people like me, like my family, is not good, so we may have a no chance. But when you reopen, these are the chance 
for all of people, so we have the same position to join the competition. F means that join the exams. If you pass the exams, you have the credit, and then you can go into the university, go into the college. So m many things happen, and but there's a, uh, but it's something is a uh, your change is a uh, very active, very. Uh, 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 positive, but something is uh, negative. So up to now, I think that to be the scholar, we need to do the analysis more carefully. You cannot think that you uh, threw out these uh, uh, waters and including of the infant. So we need to do the more detailed, more careful analysis about this uh, change, especially late 1970 and the beginning of 1980s. That's because this change nowadays became exactly political correct. Nobody can challenge. Reform, okay. Is there anybody challenge reform? No, because reform became exactly political correct. But we are now to give the objective analysis. That is a kind of challenge. We said the reform is exactly come from the crisis, uh, especially come from hard lending. Means you have, you have a big institutional cost. You need to deal with this, and then you have such kind of measures. And then you make comprehensive name. That is a reform. <laughs> Means that we still have some ability to do the reflection, to do the analysis. That is extremely important. So I hope people, when you hear my lecture, you do have your own thought to do your analysis, to know what is negative, what is positive. So here we said it's a, uh, uh, the, the, the post mall time, there will be no political correct more times experiences. And then we short of a lot of uh, 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 ability to do our analysis about economic crisis. When we talk about hard lending, the hard lending mainly means that the post mall group politicians, they set up their ideology with no ability to mobilize the low class people. And so there's no impossible to mobilize unemployment youth going down to the countryside. And then means that the state capitalism utilized foreign capital to expand their industries facing the challenge of the deaths. The foreign deaths turn to the deficits. Only can have the hard landing. There will be no chance for soft landing. So hard landing come to not only the economic events, but also the social and the political events. So when we talk about the educated youth come back to the city, we need to think about that events combining the re-correct these uh, political movements from 57 until 79. So 22 years, all the political movements, all renamed as political incorrect. All these uh, people got a penalty, even put in jail. All re-liberalized, re-liberalized, that is for 20 years. This policy is a combining events to make almost all people going down to the countryside think that they got a kind of penalty. So they do have the rights to re-enjoy their life in original position in cities. 
So these are kind of mixed or confused ideology or ideals. I mean, in their mind, they cannot make which one is uh, right, which one is uh, uh, wrong. So these are very confused uh, thoughts, very confused feelings in the, in the street, in the society, to make people from that time have uh, unnamed uh, motions. Everything cannot satisfy it. Everything is satisfied. So at that time, when they cannot take the traditional ideology, large amount of these people with very confused thoughts turn to the West ideology. But the West ideology is exactly the Cold War ideology. So that is from 1980s. A lot of people in Chinese society more easier to accept Cold War ideology until now. So even you win, even you succeed in the economic reform, but you are unsucceeded in ideological computation. That is up to now still be a big trouble now in, in, in mainland China. So we when we talk about the hard landing, we said the institutional cost in China, not only economic, not social, but also in theoretical field, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the social science, in the cultural studies, a lot. So from that time, potentially, until 1990s, it's obviously, no doubt, the scholar society, no people believe that you also have a very traditional character, a political correct, including of these traditional cultures, because they criticize everything. Until now, some people do aware the dangers, and then they stand out, but not easy to fight with the, the major majority, not easy to to argue with this uh, mainstream. So that's what I think that hard landing, not only the economic hard landing. So when we gave the conclusion, I gave the hard landing explanation mainly for the theoretical issues, the social science and, uh, and the cultural studies and whatever. That is a, it's a, it's a ideological issues. And then when we talk about the government's uh, 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 measures, how does they deal with this crisis? You can see that governments directly use the police system. It's a, it's a big force. At that time, it's a very big force. Directly used to deal with the hard landing crisis. So thousands of people put in jail. When they're out of the jail, what they can do. No normal job. They only can do private. So I said in 19, late 1980s to 1990s, the private sector enlarged very fast because they, these people, they do have ability. They have energy, but they put in jail. When they out of jail, they only can do private. No any state-owned enterprises or governments, departments, or the universities, or institutes want a people from jail. So the more you put in jail, the more you enlarge the private sector. That's logical. And also because of that, the governments want the SOE and the government departments all open the door to absorb this unemployment use. And then means that the governments order these uh, government departments low efficiency. That is also the reason of the further reform. And when we have a rural reform, we said the rural reform is exactly come from the government's thought. That is a xiu yang sheng xi, means that you take less. Now there's more uh, big number, I mean 
85% of the government's budget income have from, have, uh, uh, from the, 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 the urban area, from the industries. And then you released agriculture. Give agriculture culture to peasants. And to make, make agriculture, make peasants enjoy their agriculture life. So that is the dual system became dual, became separated. And then uh, it's just the, the opportunity, just historical chance to peasants. <laughs> because you do have a model, you, you do have a factories, you do have industries in the city. So every people can learn, can notice that, okay, if you set up industries, you set up a workshop, you can have an extra income. So the rural people, when you release control, the rural people immediately not only take the agricultural resources, but also use their human power, their human resources for rural industrialization. That is why, just uh, 10 years later, the rural industrialization finished the primitive accumulation. No such kind of dirty things. Yeah, they do have, but it's uh, mainly as a, uh, they destroy the environment, they destroy the natural resources, take too much from laborers and uh, as a surplus, whatever. But nobody complain. Nobody going to appeal. No social conflicts. No mass uh, uh, campaign. Not like the Western industrialization that is uh, take large resources from the colonized area and the kill people and uh, whatever. Not that. It's quiet. They finish primitive accumulation to set up a big number of the factories. It's almost 27 million rural factories and workshops. And then they contribute half of the industrial outcome, industrial products. If you calculate it into the volume, they, they contribute half. Very little investment. No exploitation outside. But you have a big rural industry. That is uh, the outcome of the rural reform. So we said not only gave land, but also the, the, the agriculture turned to the rural industry. And then they have a state-owned enterprises reform combining the individual business and the private sector grow up. But the government's macro measures, they issued the treasury bonds and also large number of the added, added currencies. And also set up the openness policies. So these are four measures to deal with the crisis. It's workable, but left a lot of trouble, a lot of big issues for further reform. One thing is also need to take into consideration, that is the governments open the door, allow their young generation, means that the, the cadres' children set up the company. They only can take the resources from governments and then sell to the markets. At that time, our scholar emphasized shuang gui zhi, means a double price, a twin price. One price controlled by the governments is low price. Another price is market, is much, much high. So the more you control the government materials, the government controlled materials, the high price in market. So who take this, uh, this uh, income, this interest? The officials, young generation, set up their company. They take this uh, big interest. And also, the government control the financial sector, means all the bank belong to government, means belong to state capitalism. Who can have the loan? If you are a factory, you need to negotiate. And then the market interest rate and the government's control the interest rates also is a big gap. It means that who 
can deal with to have the government interest rate, who will have the interest in this gap. So it means that the corruptions caused by such kind of measures, you allow government department give the chance for their children to open the company in name of the tertiary industry, in name of service. Yes, they do service. But it's Guandao Gongsi, how to say that? It's official Dao, how to say that? Translate. Huh? Speculation? The official business speculation or something, but anyway, corruption come from such kind of measures. Until the next crisis happened, the inflation going much, much high, and then the gap, combining the inflation, the gap increased. And then this, these, these uh, official young generation companies took large number of interest. That is their, their, the first gold come from this institutional change. That is also the reform. So why this scholar's side, when they first contribute their suggestions to win price system, second they said, okay, you need to have a line. It means that corruption, okay. Be after this line, you don't need to be corruption. Before that, I don't want to criticize you. I don't want to deal with the problem. So many new suggestions. They are trying to block people to deepen their studies, to know what is the root, what is original come from. I said, original come from here. And then you know that where is the people's rights? Workers. They also have a young generation. Where are they gone? Where are they? So you have a rich company. You control a large number of the properties. And then you make the poor and the rich gap large and large. And then who is the poor? Who is the rich? What is the opportunity the rich take? What is the lose this uh, low class got? How they lose? You need to, to, to know the details about this, uh, this procedure. And then you may have your own thought, your own analysis. So that is why we need to do this uh, economic crisis one by another, to know the details of this, uh, this crisis. And then what kind of danger, what is a kind of opportunity. When we talk about the crisis, we said in Chinese, one danger, one opportunity. Put together, that is a crisis. But this crisis to whom? Danger to whom? Opportunity to whom? It's still be need, we have uh, further more studies. So, and then finally, after these uh, things happened, the state-owned enterprises became low efficiency. And then the new company got the big properties. And so going forward, that's marketization. So market reform, also the marketization became a kind of mainstream ideology. That is uh, later. So let's go in to do the further more studies next lecture. Okay, I finish. Thank you.